Hey, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm really appreciative for this conference. And like Dr. Cagle's uh, keynote about that concept or observation about the halo effect was like, that gave me chills. That was beautiful. Um, so I just want to like give a moment of appreciation for that too. Um, I want to talk about building robust applications. Um, I, I come from front end land, so I kind of cheated my way into this track. Um, and uh, I'm going to kind of come at it with that lens. Um, and I'm going to do it, um, obviously, looking at uh, chaos engineering. Uh, my name, as, as we've said, is Patrick Higgins. I'm a software engineer at Gremlin. Gremlin um, creates a suite of chaos engineering tooling. Um, and it's uh, our goal and our hope to create um, products for developers, engineers, uh, companies, and organizations um, that help them build a more resilient and robust uh, internet. So what is chaos engineering? So it's a really scary title. Really, <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds horrible, and it sounds like something I don't want to pitch to my boss. Um, but essentially, it's kind of clickbait. Um, it's not really about breaking stuff. It's not, well, it is about breaking stuff, but it's not doing it in a destructive way. Um, it's much more of a pragmatic process. So it's the thoughtful, uh, it's thoughtful planned experiments designed to reveal weaknesses in our systems. Uh, it's essentially a scientific approach, and it's an iterative approach. Um, essentially, we want to start with a very small scope and very small impact, um, and be really diligent and thoughtful about where we want to inject failure in order to reveal and discover um, weaknesses in the larger system. So really, it's not, so what I want to really like drive home today is it's not so much about, uh, it's not really about the tech, and it's not about the code. It's really about a cognitive shift away from thinking just about the happy path towards an approach where we really start to embrace um, the potential pitfalls that we could have in our applications and our systems, um, both technically but also organizationally, um, and really asking ourselves constantly, how can we address these things to create uh, more robust uh, services and applications, infrastructure, um, and as a result, create a more resilient system in totality. So, when I go home and see my parents and my family or uh, go for Thanksgiving and, um, and I get asked, like, what do you do, Pat? Um, and I start talking about chaos engineering. Um, it can be a little uh, hard to describe to non-technical people sometimes. But the way that I choose to do it normally is by using the metaphor of vaccination. So the idea is that we inject some something small, harmful, into a larger system and build up antibodies or some kind of like resistance to that failure. Um, another really good metaphor would be doing uh, weight training. So you don't want to start with, uh, you know, a huge amount of weight straight off the bat. You're going to hurt yourself. Um, you want to start with something small and manageable um, and really observe the, your ability to increase that kind of load as time goes on. So um, much, in, much to that kind of spirit, uh, the idea of chaos engineering is this iterative process of starting with a really small amount um, and then kind of like working our way up and out of that as we go. And so what we're trying to do here is really think about what failure could, or what failure will eventually happen um, and proactively mitigate that instead of waiting for um, a, uh, a point in time where it's actually the user that discovers that for us. So in this way, when you, when you think about it from, uh, from an operations perspective, what you're really doing is trying to um, move away from uh, technical debt that you're, you will incur in the future. And in that sense, you can really justify it you know, some initial cost up front in getting involved in these kind of proactive processes. So at Gremlin, we build out a suite of chaos engineering tooling. And what we choose to do there is 
um, actually use Gremlin stuff on Gremlin. So we're breaking the stuff that breaks stuff. Um, so there's just this like recursive logic, which is confusing and fun. Um, but when I first started at Gremlin, um, as someone who came from front end, I wasn't really used to thinking about failure all that much. Normally when I develop, I'm doing it against servers that always or almost always return um, successful responses, um, you know, potentially like staging APIs. They're never under any kind of load. Um, nothing's ever like really that complex. So thinking about mitigating failure was something that was like really very much an afterthought for me. And uh, when I went to Gremlin and we started breaking our, our staging servers, what ended up happening was we'd, we'd come together for these um, group game days where we'd, you know, all sit in a room um, and observe what was going on uh, from a monitoring level, but also like what would actually happen to the API. Um, and I was actually a couple of, couple of months into my time at Gremlin when we first did this. And what I realized was like all the features I'd been working on for the first couple of months just like did not do well. <laughs> they did terribly, which is not a, something you want to happen when you've like just started a job. Um, but what I found was like, you know, from a front end perspective, um, I'd been like coupling a lot of my asynchronous logic. So I could have um, some stuff that was like really critical to the user experience. And then other data that I was pulling that was like really auxiliary, like really secondary, did not matter as much. And I'd actually like coupled some of that together in, in the way that I'd kind of like built out these views. And I started to realize that like all this stuff really needs to be thought through from the perspective of how do I make this UI as robust as possible? And so what I realized was like, even from a front end perspective, I needed to take the approach that my piece of this, you know, larger organization um, was important when it came to dealing with and mitigating failure, and I had to take ownership. And that sounds really punitive. Like, it sounds like something I don't want to do. Um, it's just like one more thing that I've got to like add to like the laundry list of stuff in my day. Um, but I would argue, um, I'd contest that it's actually really kind of uh, useful to get in a room with people and collaborate on thinking about different aspects of creating a user experience in its totality. Because what you tend to find is you'll learn a lot more stuff about the jobs of the people going on around you as they start to think through the ways that they can mitigate failure as well. So when it comes to this spirit of collaboration between different parts of a team, Postman can be super, super useful. So I want to run through kind of like a case study of uh, how I might use Postman for doing some chaos engineering uh, just in my day-to-day -day work. Uh, so it would be like pretty high level, uh, you know, just like a, a pretty uh, sweet 101 on how I might do it. Um, so the first thing would be to build out a collection. Um, and essentially I'd refer to this as like a healthy or like steady state collection. So I'd, I could define, at Gremlin I could define the uh, collection in three ways. I could either um, create the request by hand, uh, import uh, the API contract using Swagger because we, Swagger is what drives our documentation. So uh, I can use all the annotations from our, um, uh, from our Java backend. Um, or I can uh, capture the request by proxy as well as I work. Um, so this would be capturing the request by proxy through the, through the uh, Postman UI. And after I've captured the request that I'm interested in, I can uh, choose to like mock out this like steady state environment that I wanted to create. So this can be really useful as well. Um, just from having kind of like a, like for, for someone working on the front end, a bit of a redundancy factor as well. Say like some bad code gets pushed up to, um, uh, to the back end and I'm getting bad stuff back from the service. Um, in that situation, I can just go, I can uh, switch my URL params and start making requests against a mocked state and just keep developing. So it's really like nice to think about um, resiliency, not just from the idea of how it impacts um, uh, the end user, but also how does it impact my day to day? Like how does it impact my ability to ship code? So after we have this like steady state 
um, available to us, we can then fork that um, attack collection um, and we can start running chaos experiments. So what that might be is that we uh, shut down some instances, uh, we can inject some latency, uh, we could um, take down a, a DB replica, like it could be any number of things. Um, probably just start with one of those things, don't start with all of them at the same time. Um, but when, you, when you've chosen that experiment and you've fleshed out uh, a hypothesis and, um, and like monitoring and alerting and all the things you want as, like a, as, an, obs as an observational lens for what you're doing, what you can also do is uh, you can start running, uh, you can use like a collection run at this point as well as you go through your chaos experiments. And then what you can do is save all the responses that are coming back from this, um, from this uh, chaos experimentation that you're doing. Um, and this can be really useful because after you've figured out any kind of problems that you're having with, uh, with you know, your system as a whole, um, if there's anything there for me working on the front end that I want to fix, um, what I can do is look back and I've got these uh, requests that I've got back from Postman. I could throw those into a mock at that point and then develop against that specific use state. So this would be me launching some, um, um, some experiments in the day to day. Now, um, most days of the week, I don't really want to be taking down infrastructure at Gremlin that other people are working on. Um, that would not make me a popular person in the office. So what I choose to do most of the time is if I want to work on the front end and see the way that uh, my UI is interacting with the API, um, I can inject uh, failure at the application level. Um, and we have a application level fault injection tool uh, built in uh, Java and then a, uh, uh, a Chrome extension associated with that that's just internal at the moment. Um, but essentially using this Chrome extension, uh, I can target um, specific, uh, specific endpoints and services via uh, just looking at the URL. Um, and that essentially will mean that that kind of like latency or exception that I add to that will be, um, uh, will be essentially what's used to uh, filter uh, network traffic. So uh, this would be like a, a potential error that I'd get on the screen if I had a malformed state, uh, some kind of like malformed uh, response. So essentially we're building with React here, this would be like an error boundary was hit um, because we had some kind of type error. And then this, this would be a separate one if we got back some kind of uh, 404. So this really helps me in the day-to-day -to, -day to like figure out exactly how things are going to break and you know, try to unify that experience as much as possible, create a user experience that's as, um, uh, as ex expectable as possible for the user, like thing, something that's going to be consistent, that they can really, um, they're going to get that information and understand what's going on to the best degree possible. So you might ask, that's great, Pat. Like, what's the point of all this? Um, why, why use Postman? Uh, I'd say really the secret source is in collaboration. Um, the error responses are, meet, are easily available outside of that experimentation environment. We really want to be able to document and have as much visibility um, as possible and as, as much historical documentation as possible into the way that these experiments went. That's how you'll get the most value going forward. Uh, with Postman, the mocks are shareable which is really perfect for reproducing state and collaborative environments. Um, a really good uh, example of this would be, uh, say I have a PR that I want to put up, but it's related to a very, very specific um, exception state. Um, and if I want someone to be able to repro that state as part of the, um, uh, uh, the pull request process, what I can actually do is just feed them, a mo give them a mock um, and tell them to just like switch out the endpoint that they're hitting in that specific way, give them a URL to hit, and then they've been able to create like some really niche state that was like just relevant for, um, uh, for this specific pull request that I was trying to put up. So immediately that like 
really heightens our ability to, um, or I mean, <laughs> it, it lowers the barrier to entry for uh, being able to deal with a lot of edge cases straight away. Um, and in this way, what we're doing is easing, uh, like the, that ease of reproduction is really incentivizing better error handling. So if you're really, if this is all interesting to you, if you like the idea of breaking stuff on purpose, um, I would suggest uh, going to uh, the Postman documentation. Uh, and they actually have a whole section on chaos engineering with Postman, uh, which is super, super cool. And I can't uh, express enough how, um, how easy it is to set up and um, how quick you can get like, really interesting returns from this. Essentially, they uh, explain how to get set up with, um, with a Kubernetes cluster, like a Hello World one, um, and start injecting failure into it, um, just using Postman and using uh, Postman uh, uh, collection runs. Um, they basically give you the environment to use as well. You just put in a couple of AP API keys. You can probably get it done in 15 minutes. So very low barrier to entry, would definitely recommend. Um, additionally, there's a really good Medium post by Joyce Lin from, uh, from Postman about chaos engineering generally. It's a very good 101, would suggest, would recommend. So thanks very much. Um, I'll be around if you want to talk more about this with me. Uh, I'd be really happy to. I've loved today. This has been really good fun. Everyone enjoy yourselves. Take it easy.